वेलकम सो टुडे वी वुड टॉक अबाउट वन ऑफ द वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक्स एंड दैट इज मैप स्केल्स नाउ एज वी नो व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट ज्योग्राफी वी अंडरस्टैंड दैट देयर आर लैंड फॉर्म्स ऑन द रियल अर्थ सरफेस सच अ ह्यूज अर्थ इफ यू वांट टू डिपेक्ट ऑन अ पीस ऑफ पेपर इट बिकम्स वेरी वेरी डिफिकल्ट और इवन इफ यू वांट टू डिपेक्ट इट इन अ थ्री डायमेंशनल शेप ऑन अ ग्लोब इट्स एक्सट्रीमली हार्ड सो bringing the exactness is something that's very very important how does this happen this happens only and only through map scales with the help of a scale what we try to do is we try to understand the real distance onto the ground and reduce it to a certain distance onto the scale so let's say my real distance onto the ground is 100 km i can reduce down that distance to 1 cm on my map so whatever is the exact distance between the two cities city a and city b which is 100 km can be brought down to 1 cm line showing city a and city b again the map scale varies based on the extent of the map that you are trying to draw whether you are trying to draw the whole of the country map whether you are trying to draw a city map or a state map so based on that you would have your map scale that would vary now when i talk about map scale what is very very important to understand is the concept of numerator and the denominator the very basics of the mathematics where we talk about a fraction so what is fraction x by y we say is a fraction where x is the numerator and y is the denominator now if i say this is the denominator and this is the numerator on the numerator i keep the scale that is on to the map the distance on the map and on the denominator i take keep the distance which is on to the ground now this ratio of map scale to the map distance to the ground distance is what is known as rf or what we call as representative fraction which represents the real distance on to the ground and the distance on the map now this is the very fundamental the next important thing that we understand here is the enlargement and the reduction of the map so i can reduce any map i can enlarge any map based on the requirement i have so let's say i have a map of india on this piece of paper i have a piece of paper on this piece of paper i am trying to draw the map of india now the distance between place a and place b would be very small but what i now do is i enlarge that map i rather than bringing the whole of india i just depict the state of gujarat let's say and depict the points a and b so the so the line that i am drawing becomes bigger i can much clearly elaborate i could say the fine details or the minute details in the map so when i am talking about a small scale map it's usually uh, the major locations that are marked but when you have a detailed representation you can bring in minute uh, things that are required again this map provides a relationship with the real ground so how do we denote a map scale map scale can be denoted by three ways one of that we already talked about we'll be further discussing it in detail so that is representative fraction the next is statement of a scale and the last is a graphical scale what is the difference between the three first of all before we begin with these three let's talk about general terms so there are two systems of measurement one is what is known as the metric system the other is known as the english system commonly seen in uk and america so when i say the metric system it is kilometer meter centimeter millimeter so that's how it runs so i say 1 kilometer is equal to 1000 meters 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeter 1 centimeter is equal to 10 millimeter now is why i want to relate millimeters to kilometers i can easily do that so that is the metric system the other is the english system english system works with miles furlongs yards and feet so i say 
12 inches from one feet and that's the one feet ruler that you usually see the scale that you see then three feet together form one yard so we say yard of cloth so that is three feet of cloth now once i have the yard 220 yards form one furlong and eight furlongs form one mile so i know how to calculate mile and this is the unit that runs with inch feet then you have yard furlong and miles okay so that's the two scales that we use now talking about the three types of scales that we discussed the first as we said is the statement of a scale the statement of the scale is very very simple i simply say one centimeter is uh, represents 10 kilometer so that's my statement one centimeter represents 10 kilometers now this is statement to the people who are familiar with the metric system appears very simple but to the people who are familiar with the english system of measurement they won't actually understand it because they know what is mile what is furlong okay so that's one of the major drawbacks that this system has one of the obvious advantages i could say is it's simple since it's a statement it's very very simple to comprehend the second important drawback i would say the first was the issue of familiarity the second drawback i would say here is if this map scale is either enlarged or reduced i'll have to change my statement i'll have to change it to one centimeter represents five kilometers or one centimeter represents 50 kilometers so in that case my previous statement becomes redundant I don't require it, it's outdated and you have a new scale that has to be laid down. However, this is not the case with a graphical scale or a representative fraction. So the next type of scale that we talk about is a graphical scale. Now graphical scale as the name suggests, you have the primary and the secondary divisions which are marked on the scale. It is valid if the scale is reduced or enlarged also and that's one of the very important advantages that a graphical scale has. So under the graphical scale we draw a bar graph and on this bar graph you would have the readings that would be there. So let's say uh, you usually say 15 centimeter is the ideal line length that you draw. So let's say I represent 5 kilometers is equal to 15 centimeters. So my 15 centimeter line on the uh, map or on the paper would represent 5 kilometers. Okay. So I would have to divide every 3 centimeters of the line to make it 1 kilometer. So 1 and 2 partitions would be fine. The first partition would have further secondary subpartitions, which would talk about the units in meters. So 500 meters, 1000 meters and so on. The next is representative fraction. As we said, it is map distance by ground distance. And the most important advantage is it is a universal method of expression. So you, it shows a kind of relationship between map distance and the real ground distance and this is one of the very universal methods that has been applicable uh, globally. If it is a RF in India, if it's a RF in let's say China or America, every would un everyone would understand the representative fraction despite of the system of measurement they are using. They could convert it based on their own systems. So let's say I have a representative fraction 1 is to 24,000. Now if I say 1 centimeter on ground, okay, represents 2400 centimeters. 1 centimeter on map represents 2400 centimeters on ground. So I can convert this into meters. So it's 240 meters and then I convert it into kilometers so it's 0.24 kilometer so my one centimeter line would represent 0.24 kilometer and that's how I use this representative fraction now the next important thing is when I am using the representative fraction I'm trying to understand it much beyond so let's say 
I have a statement and I want to convert into to representative fraction. I have a statement that 1 centimeter represents 360 meters. How would I convert this into a RF? So my 1 centimeter is equal to 360 meters. I need to have a standardization. So 1 centimeter is equal to 360 into 100 so 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeters so i have 3600 centimeters now both of the units since they are in centimeter they are perfect to go and i say the representative fraction is 1 is to 36000 so that's how we understand a representative fraction the next interesting representative fraction example is i have 1 inch represents 4 miles how would I solve this? Now, 1 inch represents 4 into 63360 inches. Okay. So, 1 mile, we already talked about 1 mile is equal to 8 furlong, 1 furlong is equal to 220 yard, and 1 yard is equal to 3 feet, 1 feet is equal to 12 inch. So, if we multiply all this, we get 1 mile is equal to 63360 inches. So I have 1 inch is equal to this much inch. So I multiply this and I get the RF as 1 is to 253440. Okay, now this is my representative fraction. When I want to convert this representative fraction, let's say this is a representative fraction that I used from the English system. But uh, I am based in India. I am being given this representative fraction. And now what I would do is I would comprehend this on, on my own go. So I let's say do it 1 centimeter is equal to 253440 centimeters. Okay. So I convert it into meter. I remove 20. I convert it into kilometer. I remove 3 more numbers. So it becomes 2.53 kilometers. So it was a system a representative system that was from the english system that was one inch represents four mile the same thing i have converted to a, a metric system which says one centimeter is equal to 2.53 kilometers and that's how we proceed with the representative fractions now the next important thing is how do we actually construct a graphical scale Graphical scale construction is an art in itself and it's very very important definitely for cartographers and geographers. Now when I say construction of a graphical scale, let's say I have to draw a map at a scale of 1 is to 50,000. So I have 1 is to 50,000 as my RF. Now when I convert this 1 centimeter, I got 0.5 kilometers. Okay, so I say 15 centimeters, which is as I mentioned previously, that's the normal length of the uh, graphical scale that we draw. So 15 centimeter becomes 7.5 kilometers. To simplify this, I can say 10 centimeters is equal to 5 kilometer. So what I would draw, do is I would draw a line of 10 centimeters. I would divide this into five equal parts. Now, with the first part, I do the divisions of 1, 2, 3, 4 and the very first section I leave for secondary divisions where I show a secondary division in meters which is 500 and 1000 meters. So that was a RF for which I constructed a graphical scale based on the metric system. Now let's do another example. I have 1 inch is equal to 1 mile. So 1 inch is equal to 1 mile. I convert it into uh, the scale. So I make it 6 inch is equal to 6 mile. So as simple as that, I draw a line of 6 inch with a 6 inch ruler and then I divide it into 1 inch each. Each of the 1 inch would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and the very first section would have secondary divisions from miles to furlong and I would have 8 furlong so that 1 centimeter line sorry one inch line i would break into eight equal pieces and i would say they are eight furlongs so that's another way of representing a graph scale onto a, a english system the next is construction of a scale when the distances are in miles and furlongs so let's say i represent any quantity 
So I have a RF of 1 is to 50,000. The same example that I took previously. But rather than taking it as a centimeter meter scale, I now take it as a scale for miles and furlongs. So I represent this on a 6 inch scale and I represent this as 50,000 into 6 divided by 63360 and this would be the inches or the miles that would be represented. So this 6 inch would represent 4.73 miles. Now what I do is I take these miles as a whole number. So I take this as 5 miles. So how many inches it become? 6.34 inches. Now I draw a line of 6.34 inch. Okay. What I want to do is I want to break it into 5 equal parts. Now it's very very difficult to break this line into 5 equal parts. So what I do is I draw 2 lines at 45 degree interval. Each of the line I take an equal marking of let's say 1.5 inch or 1 inch. So I mark on both the side 1.5 inch and 1 inch and I match these points. When I match these points, what would happen? You would have the intersections that would automatically be seen. And these would be the intersections that would decide how long the cuts would be. And for the last cut again, we would further do the subdivisions in the same way. And with this subdivisions, you could have the secondary divisions that could be shown on the same scale. So that's how we construct a graphical scale. So construction of the scale is a very, very essential part of your practical aspects. So understanding that, how to resolve that is a very important discussion. We'll be talking about many more lectures in practical geography. Stay tuned. Have a wonderful day ahead.